What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Jack Rabbit here, back with Billy Goat again. What's up, guys? And you may or may not see her, but Libby is also here. Oh, she's adorable. Yeah, he saw her earlier. But she's laying on my lap right now, so you guys may or may not see her. But right, today we're going to be talking a little bit later than we would have liked, but Fate, Fate the Week Saga, which mm -hmm. is the Netflix live action adaptation of the cartoon the winx club from i think it was was it on upn originally nickelodeon it, well i know it, i know nickelodeon got the license but i think it i right. didn't start off on nickelodeon I, it I don't know start off somewhere else i think it was was it a four kids show it was a kid show Either upn or four kids one of the two yeah i watched it when it first came out I did not hear of it until the first season was announced and the trailer was really cool. And I'm like, what is this? Yeah. Now, now, okay, obviously, since they're adapting a kid's cartoon and this is supposed to be a more serious adult show, mm -hmm. it's not going to follow the story from the cartoon. Right. Obviously not. Right, right. Well, one change right off the bat is the specialist. In the cartoon, they have their own school. Okay. Here, they just all go to Althea. Right. Which, did I pronounce that correctly? Althea, yeah. A-L-F-E-A, -E I think? Yeah. yeah Good. Right. Okay, the, other than that, and there's not as many main specialists. Because... Right, right. In the cartoon, every girl, every original member of the Winx Club had a boyfriend who was a specialist. Mm. This time around, that's not the case. Right. There's only two main ones, which are, no, no, three. I, I guess I'll count the uh, one boy. The, uh, I'm trying to say this without offending anybody. You know which one? Revan's friend. Friend. Dane? Yeah. What? Dane? Yeah, I think so. Well, I Dane. guess I'll count him as a main specialist. Yeah, yeah, he is. Um, you know, he's interested. Well, there's in only Dane. three. Yeah. Okay. So, Let's get into the season, though. Of the ones from the show, I'm going to go over the characters real quick, the differences between the cartoon. It won't take long because most of them are exactly the same character. Okay. Pretty much. Okay, so Sky's pretty much the same. They made him a little darker. Pretty much the same. Revan, if you think he is a douche here, you should see the cartoon. I think he's more of a douche. Really? Yes, I think he's actually more douchey. More of a controlled douche, but he's still a douche. All right. Um, Bloom, pretty much the same. Powers included. Okay. Uh, Tara did not exist. Okay. So she's an original character. Uh, Sky's dad did not exist. Andreas, he he wasn't around. No, he okay. was not around. But Beatrix, she was there. She's kind of more of a mold between her three sisters, and she did not go to Alfia. She oh, went to a separate school for witches because she was a witch. She wasn't a fairy. She was a witch. I could see that. Her and her two sisters. Okay. Yeah, apparently, the show might be doing the other two. Her powers are a little bit different. Okay, if she is molded after one of the sisters, the sister she'd be molded after, I don't even remember her name, but her powers were a little bit different. On the sh In Fate, she only ever uses that lightning ability, which is really right. cool. But in, in Winx Club, she could actually do tornadoes and stuff like that. Oh, really? Okay, that's she interesting. She do the lightning. So it was actually cool. 
All right. Aisha's a little bit different. Her powers are the same. She's a little bit different. She, but not by much. She's pretty much the same. Okay. Uh, now, in, in Winx Club, they had a fairy named Tecna, and she's not in Winx. And she could control technology. So that was cool. And that'd be a cool thing for Winx Club, but maybe season three they might introduce her. We don't know. That'd be nice. About the original Winx. Um, uh, Flora, pretty much, pretty much the same. Okay. Looking abilities. Musa, your favorite. Pretty much the same. What do you mean she's my favorite? Yeah, she is. Yeah, she's totally your favorite. We already know. I already know. Well, uh, from season one, we'll have her, to go over our season two favorites later, but we'll get into that. Yeah, yeah. Her, her abilities are completely different. Really? What was what were her abilities in the uh, uh, her, show? In the show, her powers were more sound based. Hmm. Interesting. I kind of want to go back and watch this. No, it's a kid's show, but it sounds interesting. It's fun to watch. Okay. Her powers were more sound-based instead of mind-based like they are in. But let's be honest, the sound-based abilities would not work in Fate. No, not as... No, I can see why they changed it. So it wasn't bad. Stella. Her... she is a lot different because she is way more stuck up in fate than she was in Wix. She is still a princess from an, uh, from Solaria. Right. And all that, but she is way more stuck up in fate. Okay. I mean, she she basically, as soon as she meets Bloom, becomes like best friends with her. I mean, she's nowhere near stuck up. And her abilities are somewhat different. Well, and drama TV doesn't make for good TV if everybody just gets Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. And sometimes, as I mentioned with Musa and her um, sound base, it just would not translate well. What about Sam? Sam. Yeah. Sam did not exist. Okay. So, yeah. So, Tara, her brother, her father, none of them existed? No. What about Saul and uh, Dowling and Rosalind? Uh, Rosalind might have existed. I think she would have been the leader of the school Beatrix one, too. Okay. But I'm not real sure. I got to do a rewatch on that one. Okay. I'll, we'll have to watch that together so we can, like, talk about it. Yeah. Well, it's on YouTube, so you can find it. The, okay. like, entire series. Cool. I'm on, like, episode three now. I just started rewatching it the other day. I'm on episode, like, many seasons there are. Now, they do have thing where... It's something that Fate started to do, which is the girl's ability to transform and have their wings. Mm. But when the show picks up, the main members of the Winx Club outside of Bloom all can already uh, transform to the transformation. Bloom has to learn how to do it because she's just finding her magic. Right. Just like she is in fate. I like that. Well, season but, two was what, eight episodes this season instead of seven? seven. Or, no, seven instead of seven six. Seven this time around instead of eight. For what? some reason, they were short an episode. No, no, I think they had six the first season, seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they yeah. increased it by an episode. By one. It but, needs yeah. more episodes, I think, for all the characters they have. They could, they could do a 15 episode season. I wouldn't complain. Oh, yeah. Heck yeah, neither would I. Netflix would because of the budget, but, I mean, but we're not going to go into that. All right, so now we're going to start talking season two. Now we're probably going to bounce around because we're scattered brain dum-dums. It's us. It's well, us. trying to memorize yeah. seven hours of television in every moment in order is pretty hard. Yeah, unless good. we wrote all the crap down, yeah, it's not going to happen. I will. I will start by saying this. At the end of season one, we see that Headmistress Dowling has been killed. 
So Rosalind has now taken over the school. So it's kind of a new regime we're seeing between Andreas, Rosalind, and Saul Silva is wanted. And they are going to take him to, I want to say like a snowy area. They're going to take him to- They were uh, taking him to Solaria, which is where Stella is from. But they were going to take him and put him in isolation. He was going to be transferred up to the ice region. And he was basically, it was basically a death sentence, they said. Yeah. So we we picked up kind of there, you know, that was kind of interesting. I didn't know what was going to happen, dude. Yeah. And of course, the Winx Club rescue him, of course. I did notice in Bloom's phone when they were doing the group text that they showed, if you look, the group text name is Winx Club. And I'm like, I see what you did there. Yeah, I noticed that too. I thought that was kind of cool, but I didn't make the connection because I didn't know that was the name of the show. I just knew there was a yeah, great and, cartoon. And also, it was also what they call their group in the show. So it's like, I see what you did there. Love it. That's good. That's a good little Easter egg. So what <laughs> did you think about how the season started? It started very strong. I guess since it really, especially since the first episode, they don't introduce any new characters. They, no, no. No, no. Yeah. Everybody was already a pre existing character. They yes. hit the ground running, hit to their plot right away. They didn't have to worry about introducing anybody because everybody was already established. Yes. They hit the ground with their plot right away, which was nice. Yeah, when you know your characters, then you can finally do more with them. So we get yeah, to see. The only actual new character we got this season was Flora. Flora Gray. Uh, let's see, Gray was a new character. Oh yeah, I forgot Gray's. Sorry, but. Um, there were there were like some characters they did more with. Like Cat was already introduced, but I don't remember them giving her name in season one. Until season two, like I, I was, I restarted watching season one today or yesterday, and I didn't notice her fighting against um somebody in like one of the early episodes. So she's there already in the first season. I just don't think they she's talked there. Much they just name. didn't didn't have any plans to use her strongly until season two. So we're seeing at the beginning, Rosalind has a different plan for how this school should be run. She's more ruthless. She's more strong, and it appears that she is doing some evil things oh yeah definitely evil like but then it wasn't exactly what we thought it was which was really an interesting twist because they're building this whole thing of rosalind and bloom are trying to learn how to trust each other and they're sort of teasing of okay they trust each other a little bit they're increasing the bond a little bit but we still kind of go back and forth for a while with those two. Kind of a feeling out process. They never fully trust each other. Period. No, no, they didn't. And it's I'm glad that was realistic. Rise one later on the season. Right. Which we will go ahead and say that part. Since we're talking about Rosalind, we might as well mention that. Well, Rosalind reveals whenever. Well, we have we have a lot we have to go through, and we're probably jumping ahead here, and we'll go back to other stuff. But the the big point of the season to me, where things change, is whenever Stella stands up there and accuses Rosalind of all that stuff, and then you find out that Rosalind actually has revealed that there are blood witches, and yeah. so Rosalind isn't actually evil. She saved the kids instead of torturing them, like you think. So I don't know if she actually was trying to save them, or if enough people knew about it that she had to save them at that point. Uh, I'm going to go with the latter on that one. I'm not real sure. Because it was hard to get a read on Rosalind. She, you know? She's very strong. But I almost think she overestimates her abilities sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say that about what happened later on in the season. Yeah, We'll, we'll get to that. So that's where, she, that's where we're at with we'll Rosalind. Yeah. We've already talked about Silva. I liked him a lot this season. I think he's a great character. I think we should start with the adults. So Silva is great. He is an awesome character. He's he is the father that Sky deserves, not yeah. the father that Sky has. What yeah. did you think yeah. about yeah. Silva? 
What do you think about Silva? Silva was awesome. And I got to mention that picture thing you sent me the one day. Which one? The Netflix comment. <laughs> oh, okay. So there's an Easter egg when Bloom is, uh, I actually After saved it. Silva. Oh, so Silva. So, yeah, it was with Silva. Musa was talking to Silva, and she says to him, nothing like being accused of murder to give you time to catch up on Netflix. And he kind of cracks a smile, and I'm like, all right, all right, that's, that was clever. That's probably going to be similar to the scene. I think it was Fast and the Furious 7. Don't quote me on which Fast and Furious movie it was. It's hard to keep track. Okay. When, um, when they're at the family barbecue at the end, after they get the house back. So that might have been 6, actually. I think that might have been six. We'll just say it was six. Somebody down in the comments, please correct me. Yeah, let us know. Let us know yeah, how wrong Yeah, please. It's hard to keep track. Please. There's too many it's bad probably, things. It's probably Tokyo Drift or something. We're probably way off. No, right. it's not Tokyo Drift. I know it's later on. Okay. It's after. Because it's after Hobbs. Yeah, it is six. Because it's the one after Hobbs is introduced. Okay, so what happens? Okay, so they're at the family barbecue at the end. Uh... Uh, Ludacris's character and Tyrese's character. So Roman and um, I can never remember Ludacris's character's name. Oh, okay. Uh, they're cook. They're grilling, and Hobbs walks up, and uh, Tyrese goes and says, and this was not planned. This was just pre-or improv. Um. So, of course, you know, family barbecue at the uh, Toretto house. Of course, they're drinking beer. Of course. <laughs> and so Hobbs walks up. Tyrese goes and says, Mia, you better hide your baby oil. <laughs> and Hobbs, <laughs> being the, no, no, that's not where it gets funny. Uh, the Rock, being the Rock, fires back at him. You better hide that big ass forehead. Oh, okay. I did remember seeing that clip, and I'm like, oh, shit. And That's see, funny. And you see Ty, uh, Ludacris spit his beer out in laughter. <laughs> that day, was not awesome. Hilarious. But it was just so damn funny that he just had to leave it. Like, they couldn't take that out. I wouldn't be surprised if that scene was similar. Yeah, I'm thinking so. It might have been ad lib. So, Silva is being chased so by badly. Silva's being chased by uh Andreas and the kid the specialist and he has like you said help yeah. from the assistance but minus minus um who was it Stella couldn't make it I don't think oh yeah, yeah that was, Rosalind it, put that thing in her yeah, that took away the inhibitor thing on her yeah she took was away her magic to be there originally but they put that Rosalind Put that inhibitor thing on there because she was using her powers too much. Because her she invisibility was, was being caught. Her invisibility yeah. magic. And so we see uh, Andrade, not Andrade. We see Andreas shoot Silva in the back. He gets shot with two arrows and he goes underwater. But thanks to a bubble from Aisha, I want to say it was, that, that, yeah, that yeah, allows yeah, him to water. breathe underwater. Water. And he, so yeah, Aisha. he makes it safely to the innocent, his innocent friend, Sebastian. <laughs> and we'll get more to that character later. Innocent, my focus, but if we'll get to ever, later. If you ever hear us say innocent, they're not innocent at all. Well, so so he, he goes with Sebastian into hiding, and... In the meantime, Bloom's trying to get Sky and Silva to have a conversation to sort of like Bridge talk the, it out. Yeah. There's some awkwardness there. They aren't exactly in the best of terms. No. When the season picks up, they're not exactly in the best of terms. Not they're not in terrible terms, but they aren't in the best of terms. So where do you want to take it from there? We've covered that's the adults we've covered. We've covered Rosalind. We've covered the. Oh, I will. I do want to say this. Probably the best moment this season for me, if I had to pick, would be when Dowling comes back. Oh yes. Say goodbye. I loved it. Well, I don't think it's goodbye for good. And she gave one final lesson to the fairies. Yep. 
which I think helped them do what they do later on in the last episode. Yeah, and we'll get to that, but just she yeah, said, yeah, you we're know, not going to mention that yet. She said you have to embrace all the emotions, the good and the bad. You can't only use anger. You can't only use positive. You have to have a blend. Again, I don't think Dahlia, the headmistress, I don't think she's gone for good. I think she will be back the next season. I would love that. I think they just shelf, they did that to shelf her because they didn't want to her be around for that final battle. Because, yeah, with her there, it wouldn't have been much of a fight. See, we didn't get to really see her. We got to see Rosalind use some of her powers before. We didn't really get to see Dowling use much of her powers. We're assuming she's pretty strong. Oh, no, I, I'm assuming she is, too. The knowledge she has, and if if Rosalind wouldn't have caught her blind the way she did, I think Dowling, I mean, I'm not, I still, still think Rosalind would have beat her, but I think Dowling would have put up a fight. Put up a heck of a fight, yeah. So I so that's the adults. Uh, I'll let you cover the students, because I, I talk now, now. Oh, and we also have Ben, uh, Tara's dad. He's really stressed yeah. because he has to cater to what Rosalind wants, but to protect awesome. in order to protect his kids. So it's kind of a fine line he's walking. You can tell he can't really be himself this season. Okay. He has to be very on edge. Obviously, Bloom has the biggest character arc because she's the yeah. main main character. I agree. This season. I mean, it's a good character arc. I enjoy it. But we need a season three because you can't leave that character arc where you leave. They leave it at the end of season two. Yes. I mean, you can't leave it like that. That is not tying it off with a nice little bow. That's. That's, hey, we want another season. Like, hey, we need another season to finish our story. If they don't renew it. It's a big old screw you to the fans. I'm going to be really uh, disappointed if we don't get a season three after that. Ending. Yeah, because I'm sorry. That ending there, which I will discuss more in a minute, you can't leave it like that. No. What did you think so, of Bloom's Bloom? journey? This. What did you think of her journey this season? Good. She did it. She couldn't, still can't control her magic for shit, but that's not surprising. She has one of, as they reveal this season, the strongest magics. I call it. I think they called it the dragon fire. Yes, the dragon fire. Okay, which is similar to Wings Club. But um, but yeah. So she's one of the strongest magics. Very hard to control. Also controls your temper too. And you got to think. You know, in season one, we we learned that she had just come into this world, so she's still fairly new to the fairy world. Yeah, exactly. She doesn't know. Which, but she's still really strong. <laughs> Now, since we didn't mention it when we were talking about Rosalind, we might as well talk about it now. Okay. And that is that, I can't remember what episode it's in, but about halfway through the season, Bloom loses her shit. Rosalind totally deserves this, but she loses her shit and she kills Rosalind. In Bloom's defense, Rosalind was going to, like, she was starting to freeze her. And it's no defense. I mean, I'm not saying she and did that. Bloom, so she says, that'll stop you or something like that. And then Bloom comes back, and then Rosalind says something like, well, on second thought, maybe I was wrong. <laughs> no, uh, pretty and, obvious. And Rosalind wrong. gets Voldemorted, where she just kind of, she's destroyed. There's like nothing left of her hardly. Oh, yeah. She did. She did. But we did, we did miss out on some stuff. Before that happened. We have the awesome moment of Bloom and Sky go to Sky's house. They ride the horses. That was such a beautiful oh, scene. Oh, that was so sweet, yeah. And then the house, of course, gets burned on fire while they're underneath the uh, the floor. And I was like, oh, God, they better make it out alive. Because Andreas comes with Riven and Dane, and they light that place on fire. Uh, and, Andreas is an asshole. God. Riven, I'll let Riven go. Because Riven is an asshole. He's a douche, not an asshole. But Andreas uh, yes. is an asshole. Yes. Andreas is an asshole, and he treats his son horribly. Oh, yeah. And, he's a total douche. And you think they're toward, right before some bad stuff happens, you think him and Sky might eventually? Because Sky has taken out his anger and starting to step up 
So you think maybe those two are going to get a little bit closer, but that doesn't happen. No. <laughs> yeah, nah. What Sky needs to realize in season three is his dad's been there the whole time and Saul Silva. Yeah. It's kind of like with uh, Yondu and Guardians. He says, he may have been your father, but he wasn't your daddy. Andreas may be his father, but Silva's his dad. I'm sorry. I think he's already pretty much came to that realization at the end of season two. I think so. I think I think they just didn't formally say it. But the scene that on. made me think that was the whenever uh Silva yeah, I, says, This is my dad's. This was the only reason why he said the sword was off balance is it was my dad's sword, and I said it was his. I thought that was awesome. That yeah, Silva I love that. Guy, his sword, his dad's sword, not Andreas's sword. Yeah. That so was cool. Like, this guy had a really tough season. He died for died. a little bit. Yeah. But then they were able to restart his heart. Who was it to restart his heart, by the way? I can't remember. Because we know Beatrix hits him with a lightning while he's tied up. And he comes down. I don't think he was dead, though. They said he, they were able to restart it and start his heart back up. Yeah, he died Beatrix for a short time. I think Who? Beatrix did it. Yeah. Because that, that'd be the only one there that could do it. Because the only ones right. that were there were Beatrix, Flora... Not Flora. Tara. Sorry. Called her Flora. Uh, Musa. No, Musa wasn't there. Uh, Aisha. Stella. Yeah. I think I might. Did I miss anybody? No. That was a heck of a battle. Well, we'll, we'll get to that. We need to backtrack a little bit. We'll more. get to okay. that. That's last episode. We still got to talk more about the other characters. We all, yes, we talked about Bloom a lot. She, we'll talk yeah. more about her because towards the – what happened. we'll talk about the ending at the end. So we got yeah, Sky. Yeah, yeah. We yeah, gotta we're go trying to go at the start of the season. First. Okay, Riven and Beatrix. They have I'm their little hot fun with Dane. Those two. Yeah, they have a threesome between Dane, Beatrix, and – Riven, but they break up. Thank God. Was not a fan of that group. It was good for just to have fun, but if they're ever going to have anything serious in their future, it was, like you said, it wasn't going to work, man. Yeah. What did you think of Dane's character this season? I liked him even more this season. Yeah, I liked him more, too. I mean, I do like how he got away from Beatrix and started his own relationship. Yes. And we also talked about Riven. You and I both agreed he was our most improved or a character that grew on us most this season. We oh, yeah. About him earlier. Why, why? Why Why? did you like him so much? I mean, he just actually gave him some work, and he didn't just come across as a total douchebag. My favorite scene with him was like whenever he actually him and- started to grow throughout the season. Like his conversation with Tara, mm. the whole thing with Flora, Musa's his relationship with Musa this season. Mm-hmm. You know, rescuing her from the um, sucker things that took her magic. We will yes. that more in a little bit when we're talking about Musa. But and then after that, him training Musa. In the way of the specialist, even though totally he's not supposed to. But that bad boy type personality of his was actually useful there. Like they they kept to his core, but they also made him grow to where he's not completely misunderstood. Because that's how that's he felt. What it is. He felt that's- so misunderstood. He he didn't ever feel like a bad character or a bad guy. He was just so misunderstood. He finally had that. They finally took the time to let him grow a little. Riven still Riven, in my opinion. What I, oh, yeah. my favorite scene with him that made me like him more. Musa says, "You know, you don't you don't know what it's like," and he goes, "You're right. I don't live your life. I'm not you. I can't feel what you feel." So, like for him to admit that, I think sometimes we all need to hear that. That like whenever someone's talking to you, we talked to them about this the other day. When someone's trying to help you out, they don't live your life. They don't go through what you go through. So yeah, you can try to give good advice. But just to sometimes listen and understand goes a long way. And I think that's why I liked Riven more this season was because of the friendship him and Musa started there. Yeah, well, there could be more going on. There could be. There could be. But 
season three is going to have to go into that because season two didn't really go into nothing on that one. No. So we we covered them. We we have to we have to cover the sweet maidens now. Well, we didn't really talk about um, Musa. Well, the we sweet maid. Yeah, Musa yeah. is one. Musa. Yeah, we got to talk sweet Musa. Uh, Musa. Uh, she, as I said, loses her magic. She voluntarily gives up her magic pretty much. Yeah, we but find out she, when those creatures are attacking her, she lets them take the magic. Yeah, because she was very stressed. Thanks, Rosalind, for that. Because uh, she's the only type of fairy who is good against the blood witches. The mind fairies, yes. Yeah, and she's pretty much the strongest mind fairy. And Rosalind was really grilling her bad, and she kind of cracked a little. And I also think back up. it's tough for her because she has to think what everyone else is feeling. So, like, you know, we see in season one how she wears the headphones so she can focus on her own thoughts. Yeah. So this season, I I liked her character even more this season because she it felt she feels real. Like, if you if I was able to hear everyone's thoughts and my magic was taken away, I probably would have had some of the same reaction. Or what I loved about her was she fought like a specialist. She helped defend the school, and everybody else had given up hope. Tara gives the speech. Tara gives the speech, but Musa is one of the only people still fighting. Oh, yeah. She she didn't ever give up. No. And she was kind of badass, too. Yeah, and with with and that fighting stick, what? what maybe a month too much with Revan? If that with that fighting stick she had though, she was a badass. Yeah, both staff is pretty much what it was. Her and Sam though, their relationship got challenged this season for sure. Yeah, and Sam left the school. So Sam and, I, Sam, and Sam's dad both they're gone. Yeah, I was I was shocked. But do you think? Okay. We know Musa and Sam have a healthy relationship in season one. We have the stress of Musa saving him from dying. Do you think with the way things are going with his anger, because he was angry because of Roslyn, because his dad had to be so shelled up, do you think that it actually was the right? I think it was the right call for those two to break up and for him to move on, because if he wouldn't have left the school, I'm afraid he would have hurt somebody. Oh, yeah. Including Musa. Yeah. But... She was taking away his emotions. That, that's a new ability. Yeah. She's able to take away. We knew she could take away pain, but she was taking away anxiety and anger and all that. And take. But here's the thing. They didn't really tell us when Musa takes it away, does it affect her or does it just go away? Or does that actually go to her where she yeah. gets that anger? Because we didn't see her get angry after taking that. So I almost wonder if it's one of those things where she literally just makes it disappear rather than absorb it herself. Yeah. What do you think? We're not real sure. I'm not real sure on that one. They didn't really express that. Okay. So that's something maybe they can dive into during season three. Yeah. If she uses that ability at all. Mm-hmm. She's probably not going to use it nearly as much. No. I could see her using it very sparingly. Because she did it to how many characters? I want to say at least two. At least two, yeah. She did that. Didn't she do that to Aisha? I think she so. Took away, she took away Aisha's um, uh, fear or something. Yeah. Oh, let's talk about Aisha. You, I'll let you do, You go ahead. Oh, I was going to let you handle that one. Aisha, she grew a little bit this season. She did get her first boyfriend. Gray. Who, Gray, who ends up being a blood witch. No, and Flora yeah, told me like, not to be scared to fall in love with somebody, and I'm like, oh, that's good advice, and then it all comes back and bites her. And it's like, what the hell? Here, I thought she had a good guy for yeah. her, for her, and Aisha, I think, is not- it's hard for her to open up and let someone in like that, yeah. and so that was her first boyfriend. And at first, I thought they were really good together. And then and they, they find out. throw the twist oh. on us like son of a bitch. But um, and then um, but he does end up turning on Sebastian. Yes. So he's not a complete terrible guy. So 
And Aisha does the best speech of the season whenever they're in the office with Stella's mom, which I forget her name. And that's the queen of Solaria. But <laughs> whenever Stella, so Aisha gives a speech about Bloom's uh, character after she eviscerates Rosalind. Yeah. And then they try to come up with the evidence. Who was it? It was Flora and Flora, Tara? Stella, and Aisha? I want to say Flora and Tara were out there trying to find Dowling's body while yeah. Aisha, Stella, and Bloom were doing her trial thing. With, yeah. But one thing I did not like, they pinned Bloom killing Rosalind on the Blood Witches as kind of an excuse to start the war. So I didn't really like the way yeah. that happened. Even if the Blood Witches are the villains here, it almost makes you feel bad for them in a way. And so not, you know, not Sebastian, but like, you know, for yeah. some of the others that got involved, they, is, they said if you were assisting Sebastian, you were basically like going against everybody. But so, but if you think about it, Sebastian didn't kill Rosalind. It was Bloom that yeah. did. So that was kind of a crappy thing to happen to the Blood Witches. I'm not taking their side. I don't I don't like them that no. much. But at the same time, I don't like the way that happened. No, we just don't like Sebastian. The rest of the Blood Witches pretty much redeemed themselves. Yeah. Okay, so we got through we got through Aisha. We have two we have Tara. Tara Flora, and well, Flora is a new about. character. We might as well talk about her next. Go ahead. And she comes in handy. Now we don't really learn a ton about her. It does seem like she was at Althea before, but she left Althea and then came back. She came back because her parents heard that her family was having trouble with Rosalind. Yeah, um, and Flora is confident. She's let's just say it. She's flirty. She flirts. She knows how to flirt. She's very confident in who she is. Oh yeah, the but opposite of Tara. Sky or Revan. She don't like Revan that much. She flirts with him though. They they kind of joke around and sort of have this fun kind of thing going. But you know, there's not much there. I don't think. I think it's more of a friendship. Yeah. But I like Flora. I think she's a good character. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And he, she comes in handy, especially when she real. She revives Dowling, or reveals Dowling, revives her. Yeah, because Dowling was Something able to out. use some kind of plant that preserves the soul or spirit just enough to where she could come back. Yeah, I was like, and say goodbye. Is it actually dead? Is she actually? I don't think she's gone. Gone. As I said, I think she's dead. But I, I think, I think the final what was left of her spirit energy was gone after her comeback and talking whenever blooms we'll talk about that in a minute we'll get to that because there's a yeah. big scene with bloom and dowling that we'll have to get to but i liked flora i give it a thumbs up i think she's a good addition uh she also T tara for some reason keeps they they finally have a good talk but like what was it flora is trying to use something one of the characters early in the season is put under basically and she's trying to wake him up so yeah. she has a idea to how to wake him up and it works but they did not have the antidote ready so that was kind of crappy yeah that wasn't planned they were planned out very well oh but i like her character now yeah. I'll, I'll i'll take on tara tara from season one she kind of doesn't fit in not in a bad way she's she's herself but i think she's still learning how to accept who she is as a person because she's very talkative, very social, but she tends to get kind of ignored a little bit. And, and, and that improves finally this season. Tara has one of the biggest scenes of everybody. She finally comes out. She reveals that she's not in to guys. But for some reason, she was kind of hesitating. So she tells Flora first. And then she tells the rest of the sweet mates. And then she tries to go on like nothing happens. Like, All right, let's get this carpet undone or whatever. And they're like, no, we, we need to talk about this. They all hug her and everything. But she has a crush on Kat. But Kat has a girlfriend that she broke up with. But by the time Tara reveals that she likes her, Kat is now back with her girlfriend. Do you remember what her name was? Katie, Kat. I think? No, it wasn't Katie. Kat, Kat's girlfriend that she broke up with. No, I don't and remember. She and Tara that she gets back with her. But... Tara has a good season. It's very hard for her because she's seen her dad stressed. She's seen her brother stressed. She's mad at Musa because Musa was taking away 
uh, some of the pain and the emotions from Sam. And so Tara and Musa, at one point, Tara, after they use the crystal to give Musa her powers back, which doesn't work. Yeah. Um, because I think Musa hesitates. Tara, uh, Tara actually attacks Musa with like a like a plant and Musa can't move and she doesn't mean to. But what we find out is there's still some magic left in that crystal that is making them overly powerful and almost overly aggressive. And that's whenever Bloom killed Rosalind. So when they have the trial, they try to reveal the only reason why Bloom killed was because of this power from this crystal. Yeah. So her magic wasn't able to be controlled with that extra power. We still have one more to cover, and I'm going to let you take this on, buddy. I'll take Stella. So go for Stella. Stella? Okay, when we when we first pick up with Stella, she's very down in the dumps. Like, in season one, you always see her wearing designer clothes, like an all yes, nicey yes. nice, all cute and everything. When when season two picks up, she's in dirt clothes. I mean, she's got like a sweater on, a t-shirt yep, on, yep. sweatpants on, and she's wearing Crocs. Like, she is down in the dumps, but she does grow. She also has a very good relationship with... She grows a friendship with Beatrix, which is interesting. I'm like, oh, it is interesting. You figured, oh, they would grow what they would further her relationship with Bloom or one of the other sweet names. Nope, Beatrix. And I like, I like Beatrix. Their, I like their I like friendship their because Beatrix and Stella have this interest. For Beatrix, Stella wants to trust her, but the other sweet mates are hesitant. And we're hesitant as a viewer because Beatrix oh, yeah. has always done what is best for her no matter what. But after Andreas dies, Andreas was pretty much like her dad. Yeah. So that so Beatrix, like what you're saying, Beatrix and Stella had a good friendship. What did what did you think of Stella this season? Because we had the whole thing with her uncle, Stella and she was, does stand up to him. Yeah. Her uncle got too drunk um at the dinner, and she uh, finally yeah. says enough. Yeah, she totally tells his ass off, dude, which is hilarious. So Stella is getting more because she says to her mom, if I have to choose between my friends. And being a queen one day, you might be you, – uh, don't be surprised at which one I choose. Oh, and See, she's and growing closer to what her cartoon character was. Good. Closer. Not – still not there, though. But I liked her more this season. Closer to it. Oh, yeah, definitely. They so definitely made her the, more likable. We talked about the characters. Now we have to get to kind of the story. The oh. big moment is when Bloom's fate – well, we haven't decided. talked about Beatrix yet. Oh, yeah, you're right. We did a little even bit. Beatrix even surprisingly grew. She did. This season. Like, you're right. In a good After way, the like, breakup. Yeah. Separation. I don't think they were technically da dating, but you get my point. But, yeah, she actually grew, especially with her uh, friendship with Stella, where she was actually a good character. Now, she did, of course... Side with the Blood Witches, of course. Temporarily. Temporarily. Just to get well, we will get into out, that later. We found out to get her the name of her sisters, but we won't go in any more than that for now. Yeah, we will discuss that later. That yes, is the final battle, so we will not discuss that. I liked Beatrix in the first season because she was such a smart ass, but she was she actually was smart. And she she even says I've I've been rewatching. She said they might as well make the current exams in cram. Like she just knows all this stuff because she's so interested. But we find out she's from Aster Dell, same place as Bloom. Yeah. Or maybe people from Aster Dell have more power because Beatrix is strong. Oh yeah. So should we talk well, about the overall story now? Now that we covered the character, should we go yeah, and kind now of we can talk about the actual? Okay. Story well, let's 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 do our best attempt to kind of. About. We, we talked about how Saul gets chased. He ends up staying with his friend Sebastian in kind of like a bookstore. And Sebastian yeah. has this hidden room. It's like a magical – how would you word it, Jack? Like a portal or how would you phrase it? Portal, that door. Yeah. yeah, like a portal on the door. There's like a magic – so whenever uh, Andreas comes and smacks the crap out of Sebastian and you feel bad for him there, Silva's hiding behind there. Yeah. 
And then Silva comes in through the window with Sky, and he's like, hello. <laughs> Awkwardly. Mm-hmm. Hello. How you doing? That was kind of cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What were the uh, monsters called this season? Crap. I don't remember what they were called. I know it starts with an S, I swear. And I know what they look like. Yeah, a little warm looking things with no face. Hey, you keep talking about the story. I'm going to look this up. Uh, so as it goes on throughout the season, we find out, as I said, about halfway through about the Blood Witches. Yes. And that's when the story kind of flips to where at first they're training to go up against the Blood Witches, and then they have the scene where we alluded to already where Musa gets up, gives up her power, power and is saved by Revan. Yes, Revan, because Sky was too busy fighting his dad because his dad was under control of the Blood Witches. And if I remember right, his dad does not make it out of that fight alive. Andreas? Yeah. Yeah, because what happens is he is being possessed by the Blood Witches, and yeah, it's either— Yeah, he's got a choice. It's either let Silva die or, or, or kill his dad. So he chose to kill his dad. Yeah. Honestly, that's where we find out, okay, Sky really does care about Silva. Yeah. Because they have a true relationship, whereas his dad— he wasn't even he wasn't able that to was control douche. his actions. He wasn't able to control his actions. He was being possessed by the blood witch. Sebastian was just too strong. Well, yeah, we hadn't gotten to that point yet. We don't know about that point yet. That doesn't come till after this. We don't right. find out he's a blood witch till after this. Right, right. Actually, no, it's during this, actually, because Bloom figures it out during this. While this is going on, Bloom, Stella. I think it's everybody except for Musa, because Musa was, you know, at the fight, obviously. They figured out that Sebastian is the Blood Witch. And, of course, Bloom yes. being Bloom has to go confront him by herself like an idiot. And that's how you find out he's the lead Blood Witch. And that, that sets up the final fight final. that we get to. Oh, yes. Which... It's really interesting because Flora allows these creatures to feed on her to try to distract them away so that yeah. everybody else has a chance. That was really scary. Like, I, I want to know what the after effects are of all that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because there's definitely going to be after effects of that because uh, she's got that scar or whatever. So, so there's definitely going to be some form of an after effect. So, yes. And at one point, now before we get to the final battle and all that stuff, at one point the Blood Witches do take over the school. Yes, they do. And some of the witches, Flora, Musa, I mean Fairy, sorry, I call them witches. Sorry. Uh, some of the, uh, I know Flora and Musa, I think that's it, are all trapped inside. Yes. And a lot of the specialists are mind controlled. Uh, by um, Sebastian. So they have to... So they have to get into the school. Uh, they have to get into the school, but also not... kill anybody. Because, you know, they don't want to kill them because they're not of their right mind. That, yeah, that was messed up. We that see was this very one. difficult. Yeah. We you're see, we see swords and shit. Who was it that was trapped down in the bait? Flora was trapped. And Flora there was some and Hughes, I idiot, believe, were both down there. There was some idiot. Who was it? Flora and who? Musa was down there, too. No. Musa wasn't down there. She was in the hallways. Oh, yeah. Kind of. Flo- Tara wanted to do something because she she knew Flora was trapped, but everyone else just kind of sitting there and there was some idiot kid who tried to use his powers to escape and then he gets just he gets killed of course he does Dumb but floor but but tara gives the best speech of the season and rallies the troops so they've decided the solarians are coming in to help but we don't know how long it's going to be yeah oh so, and this is a dire situation because the more magic oh. that sebastian gets 
he's able to take other people's magic. And we have the scene with Bloom meeting him at that restaurant, and he's made all the customers have a knife up to their necks. And yeah, Bloom yeah, saves out. to find information, more information about different things about how to, it originally was to get Musa's magic back. She wants information on how to get Musa's magic back. One way was to kill him. And what was the other way? There were two ways. Oh, for him to give it up to her willingly. And he was going to yeah. have to take one of those creatures, get the magic back out of them, and then give the magic back to Musa. So it was going to be tough either way. So that, that kind of led to this whole reveal about Sebastian being the villain, because when Bloom reveals this to Rosalind, she goes, we'll take the win. And they're starting to get along. What actually led Bloom to killing Rosalind was Rosalind admits, she goes, did you really kill Dowling? And she goes, oh, yeah, about a foot to your right. So she reveals that she did murder Dowling. Yeah, and Bloom got pissed. And then she freezes Bloom as Bloom's getting pissed. That's when she gets out of it, and you just see this big fire, and she kills. And that led to the trial, which then led to the decision that she was going to be frozen in time for 20 years. Right, 20 years? And then a decision would be remade, or was it 50 yeah. years? I don't remember. 50. It was a long time. I want to say 20 years, and then they would reevaluate her. The queen would. And then Stella asked her mom, would you have let her go in any circumstance? She goes, no. I thought it was a very unfair trial. You know, we got out of that. And then we have the final battle, of course, which you were talking about. Musa's in the hallway kicking some butt. Tara oh, doesn't yeah. Yeah, give up. Which was actually Tara gives her speech, and then she gets a big old kiss from Kat. Yeah, as I said, um, as I said, Musa actually had the best weapon for that, using that bow staff. She oh, dude. Unless you hit, as long as you know what you're doing and you hit at the right spot of the back of the head, you could knock somebody out with that without killing them. So and she actually the had the perfect weapon. And with the movement she had, the movement ability, she's quick, very quick. And Riven helped her get better with that. Yeah. As I said, she could totally, 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 she did that without killing anybody. She could totally. So the, the fight is kind of leaving in the favors of the Blood Witches, but then once the mate, once the fairies are free, holy hell, the fight is on. On like Donkey Kong. It was. <laughs> like, right. you knew they were screwed. And part of me thought, man. Muse is a good fairy, but would she be better off as just becoming a specialist, still being with the girls, but training yeah, as a specialist? Yeah, they do have to be a male specialist. Yeah. So I, I actually they were going to go with Musa, but then she got her powers back at the end. So it's like, oh, nope, she's still a witch. Still a fairy. I want to keep making her a witch. Sebastian ha is getting Bloom's power. She's agreed to give up Dragonfire. He said to come, a yes. said to kill Sky. Unless she shows up and gives up her power. She agrees, but what she doesn't know is Sebastian's plan is to open a portal to the realm of darkness. Yes. Oh, my God. And there's a figure in the realm of darkness called Shadow that is probably going to be the main villain for season three. And apparently it has the ability to bring people back from the dead. So we oh, don't know what's going to happen with that's interesting. that next season. Yeah, we don't know for sure. That's what I've heard. But we'll see. But what do you think of the realm of darkness? Like that sounds scary. Just the name makes you go, "Oh shit!" Because yeah. didn't they say there were seven realms within the other world? I think so. Yeah. Because Solaria, we know is one. Yep. Althea's on another one. Yeah. And then the realm of darkness is the only three we know of right now. So there's yeah. Four more we don't know about. Right. Yeah. So, so in the process of the final fight. Beatrix, surprisingly, not surprisingly, turns her back on Sebastian, saves Sky, and gets killed. Well, before we get to that, though. Well, I already said it, so. Almost all the power from Bloom is gone, but she comes in and reveals what's going to happen. And she d used her powers on Sky to stop Bloom. So that stops the process. The crystal thing shatters, and. Beatrix just, he goes, do you realize what you've done? And she goes, I just saved the whole fucking world. And before she even finished her sentence, she gets launched into a wall, a cheap shot. Because head to head, Beatrix probably would have put up a fight against Sebastian. Oh, heck yeah. So oh. Beatrix, little Beatrix gets thrown into the wall head first, and we just see a pool of blood under her head. Yep, she, that's it for her. 
Yep, she's dead. Unfortunately. But she has two sisters, so I think we're going to see some two sisters come into the show, maybe, that are pissed that's off. Oh, yeah. I liked I liked Beatrix at the end because she finally revealed she realized by trying to be bad she wasn't really making any friends and Stella was the only real friend she had. Yeah. So Beatrix dies. Sky temporarily they were able to bring him back though. Yeah, he was temporarily dead. And then um, so because I'm like, oh god, because I texted you, I said, did they really just kill? Kill Beatrix and Sky, and I still had like 10 minutes left of the episode. I'm sitting there going, <laughs> No, oh, and one episode ended with Musa in Riven's arms. I was like, Nope, nope, I nope, they cannot, I, I can't do this. I left, went and got coffee, and I'm like, Okay, I believe you this? texted me and you said, and I let you know, Musa's okay, don't worry. I, was, I went and got a cup of coffee, uh, decaf, of course, because I didn't want to get hyper. But I was freaking out. I'm like, I need a break. I was going to wait to watch the next episode. I finished the entire season that night. But with, with Musa, I thought the new episode was going to start with her still in Riven's arms and then them doing something to try to save her. Instead, she's just okay. So it doesn't really explain everything about how. It kind of hints at it, it, talks about it a little bit. But I thought she was dead I, or at least going to die. I was I was like, oh, my God, they cannot kill her. Uh, so we find out. So Bloom. After Stella dies, Bloom tries to take Sebastian 1v1. Yeah. And, but her energy She's is the only one technically spent. there. Her, her energy is spent, though. Oh, yeah. So but in comes the other. Stella. I'm trying to think. There, were, there were four of them. There were Stella, Stella Tara, Tara, and Aisha. Well, Aisha and Bloom. And all the other three transform. Yeah, all four of them transform. Well, we've already seen her transform, though, Bloom. Yeah, Bloom's done it once, but the other... But we've seen these so, other three transform. The only two we haven't seen transform are Flora and Musa at this point. But but Musa just gets her powers back. Yeah. Um. So they all four transform and use their powers. Because he says, I'm stronger than you. And, she, and Tara says, well, are you stronger than all four of us? And they use their powers together, kind of like Which, they did in Halloween Town. Oh, yeah. And they are able to defeat him. Most badass line of the season. (laughs) Tara got the most badass line of the season. That That was was pretty cool. That was total badass. (laughs) So Sebastian's dead. Rosalind's dead. Beatrix is dead. Andreas is dead. Uh, That's where we end there. Sky and Bloom, though, you want them to be together. You want them to work. Bloom leaves letters for her sweet mates. She leaves. She's about to. She decides the only way to close this portal from this well, side is to go in they there. They flat out told her that the only way to close that portal, the portal right. that ends up in the basement, is from the other side. Right. So I don't so know Sky, why it's her that had to close it. Right. But she did. So Sky confronts her and says, "Really, you were just going to leave me a letter? You weren't even going to like come say goodbye?" And they have a full conversation, and then Bloom finally so says she has to go. Yeah, yeah, that's his girlfriend. Bloom finally has to leave. And she goes into the realm of darkness, but it doesn't look so dark when she goes in. Yeah. We, we get a hint of the shadow figure, but the season ends. Bloom walks into a, opens a door, sees a woman with her back facing her. Which is supposed to be her mom. It is her mom. Because she says, didn't she say like, hi, mom, or yeah. hello, mom? Yeah. So that's when they end the season. I'm like, what? No, you can't No, you end can't it leave there. it there. No. If they do not get a season three, I think there's going to be a lot of disappointed fans. I know. It was number two in the U.S. behind Cobra Kai and number one in the U.K. Uh, when it first came out. And Cobra, yeah. so Cobra Kai and Fate were one and two in two different big countries. That tells me both yeah. shows have been pretty good. So I will say I liked this season better than the first season. What about you? Yeah, definitely. They definitely improved things. It's like season one, they were just getting their feet wet. Season two, they were like, all right, let's let everything hit the fan because we know what the heck we're doing now. All right, we're going to end this with some quick, what do you call it, flash or whatever you call it, rapid fire, whatever you want to call it, but we won't do it that quick. Okay, your favorite character this season, Jack? Mm, Revan. Revan. Revan took it this season. I mean, he really improved. I mean, season one, he was nothing but a junkie jerk. I and 
season two, he was actually a good guy. Still a jerk when he needed to be, but he was still a good guy. So he was your favorite character this season? Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, I had to think about it because I had a few. Silva was close. He was a runner up. I really liked how much he stepped up the season. Um, Tara had a lot more going for her. Flora being a new character, but my favorite character this season hasn't changed since season one. <laughs> Musa. Musa. I have a crush. I have a crush on her. I'm not gonna lie. But her character getting losing her powers, but still finding a way to be useful and not wanting her powers back. I felt like it was such a good story and it was so realistic. Like, what would you do if you could feel and hear everyone's emotions and you had the ability to get rid of that? She was so overwhelmed during that battle with uh, Andreas and and all that happening that I just, I feel like she had the best story. And I'm biased, of course, but I, I do think they did a good job with her character. I, my question is, if we get a season three, how will she react and feel after getting her powers back? Because now she can fight and use power. So if she ever has to battle somebody, they're going to think all she can do is read their mind. No, she can actually fight now. So she's become a stronger character. But Riven is up there too. He's my most, he has grown on me the most this season. Not my favorite character overall, but he has grown on me the most. Okay, uh, what what do you got? Come up, do you have a question or do you have a thing you want an opinion on? No, 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 no I'm good. Um, do you think the number of like deaths were you surprised at all the characters that were killed? No, uh, a little, yeah. I was too. I wasn't I, surprised at Roslyn because I either thought Roslyn was gonna have to die. Um, so Roslyn's death didn't surprise me. Andreas's did a little bit, but the most shocking death to me was Beatrix. Yeah, same here. And then whenever, oh, by the way, I didn't tell you this. I forgot to text you this. When they reveal that Sebastian's the main villain, I thought it was going to be gray before they revealed that he was a blood witch and all that. Because it was somebody under their nose that was currently attending the school and he was new. So I thought gray was going to be the big bad, not Sebastian. So I was way off on that. I, I, I mean, he was an assistant. But he wasn't actually the real villain. I think he just wanted to – he's like the same as Beatrix. He wants to know more about Asterdell. His brother died, and Sebastian's promised him to bring his brother back from the dead. Very good season, though. What what would you rate it? If if you were to say of the last shows you've watched in the last year or two, is it one of your favorites? Is it middle of the pack? Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously it's not going to be Stranger Things. I'm putting it up there with it. It's really oh, yeah, it's up there with Stranger Things, Cobra Kai. I still say Cobra Kai's ahead of it, but oh yeah, yeah. For you, I think so. For me, Stranger Things, and the thing is, both shows do different things, and and they do good things in their own way for both shows. So I can't compare the two, but I would say Fate the Wink Saga is definitely a show that I, after season one, I wanted to see a season two. Now I'm like, okay, they have to keep going. So I'd say it's a top show for me. It's a top, it's a top two, two or three for me. And that always changes because Netflix, they're always coming out with new shows. I know, right? They got that um uh that's 90s show coming out. I think it's this year, next year. Really? Yeah. Now and all the original cast, now Red and Kitty, the the wife, are supposed to be. That's right. That's right. All the original cast are returning, except for Hyde. But that's because know why. Still. Yeah, we know why, and we're not going to get into yeah. it here. But we're, by the way, we'll guys, legal trouble and leave it there. No, please leave a comment with your favorite character. What was yes. your favorite moment from this from season two? If you made it this far, thank you. We'd love to have you subscribe, give a thumbs yes. up. By the way, we do have a code. We are going to put. In the description for a lightsaber deal you can get. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. I'll take over from here because I do the commercial. Yeah, all the time. go for that. Uh, all right. So the code is for, as Billy mentioned, sabermasters.com, which I will put the website name down in the description as well. I would link it, but I can't figure out how to do it. But they carry lightsabers. I don't have one out here with me. I do have own two myself. So does Viper. 
Uh, and they're not inexpensive. I think right now they're like 220 bucks, which lightsaber wise is actually really cheap. And they're buy two, get one free. So technically, oh, wow. each lightsaber is only like 110 each, which is a dang good price because most yep. lightsabers custom uh even lightsabers like this one are about three or four hundred each so it is a dang good price and with our code you get 15 percent off the code what is was that code again jack all uppercase so j-a-c-k all uppercase six seven one one zero and it'll get you 15 percent off well, Uncle Jack, I'm glad we had this time to talk. This pop culture stuff, I think we need to do this more often. I think pop culture is awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe and not talk for into... over an hour, but... Ah. If you came and hung out with us this long, we appreciate you. We appreciate. Leave a comment. Like I said, favorite character, favorite moments of the seasons. My favorite two were the horseback ride and uh, Headmistress Dowling saying her goodbyes. Oh, yeah, that was a really sweet moment. Uh, all right, and my next video up on this channel will be the Transformers Legacy. I can't. Will be a Transformers figure. Uh, Tarantulas, I it's based on his name from Power Rangers. From Power Rangers, Transformers Beast Wars. Okay. If you watch our channel enough and made it all the way through this video, you know I'm a dumb dumb. What? When can we be looking for that video? Do you think? Do you have a? It'll week? post the day after I post this video. Perfect, Sometimes guys. Next day. Seriously, we would like to give you get you more involved with the channel. So just leave some comments, get the chat going, talk to us about your about Please. this show. Well, we, we will as long as you don't you're not being a complete troll or anything. We'll comment back. I'm I'm off work. I'm not working. Give me something to do, please. I'll gladly. Yeah, please. You guys have any questions, especially Power Ranger questions, feel free to ask him in the comments. I will gladly answer them on any video. I don't care if it's even not even a Power Ranger related video. You got a question. Go ahead and ask us. I will try to answer it. And if I don't Oh, look it, at that adorable dog. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she is adorable. But seriously, guys, we, we're so happy that you're here with us on the channel. It, it's really here. cool to have you here. Here. There we go. Libby! Hi, puppy. She well, doesn't. She's like, who's this weirdo looking at me? It's been right, really well, good. Let me sign this off real quick. Yeah. I will catch you all later as Libby tries to run and hide. We will catch you on the flip side. We're going to hop on out of here.